In this tutorial, I'll be going over five common mistakes that you should avoid when using Inkscape files in Cricut's design space. Now, personally, I don't have very much experience using these cutting machines, but I know a lot of you guys do because you often ask me questions about problems that you have using your Inkscape files in them, and I wanna be able to help you with those problems. So I picked up one of these devices and after playing around with it for a little bit, I was able to identify five different types of objects that will give you problems if you try to use them or transport them over to Cricut's design space. So let's have a close look here. We have clips, patterns, strokes and markers, text objects, which includes text on a path, and masked objects. Now, if I come over here into Cricut Design Space, you can see what these objects look like when I import them. Pretty much all of the details are lost. Even the text labels underneath them are gone. So I'm gonna go through these objects one by one and show you how you can fix the problem for each one of these based on the type of object you're working with. So the first type of object would be clipping masks or clipped objects. And if I take this object, you can see this is really three different objects grouped together in a clip uh, that's clipped by an object that's shaped as a circle. And you can ungroup this clip or release the clip by going to object, uh, clip, and select release clip. Now, if that doesn't release it, you may have to ungroup it first. So if that doesn't work, go to object, ungroup, and then try releasing the clip. So now that that's released, I'm gonna come over here to my shape builder tool and I'm gonna finalize this shape so that I have the desired shape that I want. I'm gonna choose the addition option and I'm just gonna click on each of these segments to make these separate shapes. So now this is no longer a clipped object. This is now a plain old vector path. And this is what works the best in Cricut Design Space, plain paths with no strokes or any kinds of details added. So the only problem now is that you have to update the colors of these objects, and then from there, you should be good to go. So the second type of object that will give you problems in Cricut Design Space are objects that have patterns applied through the pattern menu. And this is really tricky because as of right now, there's no way to take an object that's a pattern and convert it into a plain vector path. So we have to use this little workaround where we convert it into a bitmap and then do a trace bitmap of it. So let me select the object, and I'm just gonna make a duplicate of this object. I'm not gonna use the original. I wanna save the original. I'm gonna take this copy and I wanna come up here to the toolbar menu where it says move patterns and filler stroke along with the objects and make sure that that's enabled. And I'm gonna make this really large. The idea here is we're making, we're gonna trace a copy of this. We're gonna rasterize it then trace a copy of it. And the larger an object is, the more accurate of a trace you get. So make this nice and big and then convert this to a bitmap by going to edit and selecting make a bitmap copy. And I'm gonna take this bitmap copy. We gotta give it a second to do its thing. If you're making it really large, it's gonna take a few seconds to load. There we go. I'm gonna get rid of the original copy over here. And now I have this bitmap copy and this is pixel based. If you zoom in on this, you can see all of the pixelation there on the edges. This is no longer a vector object, but that's fine because now we can trace it into a vector object. So with it selected, I'll come up here to path, trace bitmap. And over here, you can use the single scan option. The default setting is brightness cut off. And if you check the live updates preview box, it'll show you a preview of what it looks like. And if you wanna change the threshold, you can increase or decrease it using this slider. I find that this setting looks good as the default. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is and click apply. And now we have a vector, a pure vector path to work with. That's not a pattern. Let me get rid of this copy here. This is, not, this is no longer an object with a pattern. If I go to the nodes tool, you can see all the individual nodes there. So this will work much better in Cricut Design Space. So let me scale this down. And I'm gonna get rid of the original object over here. I would recommend saving a copy of your original object. I'm getting rid of mine because this is just a demonstration and I don't need it. And I'm gonna save this file when I'm done and open it up in Cricut to show you exactly uh, how this works. So the next type of object that will cause you problems if you try to open it in Cricut Design Space are objects that are strokes or markers. And you can see if an object is a stroke by grabbing your nodes tool and clicking on it, and you can see that it's a line rather than a path. Uh, you can see the individual nodes in there. That is indeed a stroke. Uh, for whatever reason, Design Space just doesn't seem to be able to interpret those strokes. So what we're gonna do is, or the markers that go around them, you see these little arrows here, those are markers. If you have strokes or markers applied to your object, just select the object and go to Path and select Stroke to Path. And now that should open up as intended when you open it with Design Space. 
Next up is text objects, and that includes text on a path as well. As I mentioned earlier, you notice you see these text labels on here. When I opened this file in Cricut Design Space, they were nowhere to be found. I guess Design Space can interpret those text objects from Inkscape, so we're gonna have to convert them to paths. I'll do this with the labels first. I'm gonna select these text objects, and I will just go to Path, and select Object to Path, and now it's ready to use. And I'll do the same thing down here with these text objects. I'll select those, Path, Object to Path, and then down here, finally, the text that I have on a path, I wanna select that and convert that to a path as well. And then this text is placed along a stroke. So I want to take this stroke and convert it to a path as well. Another shortcut that you can tell whether or not something's a path or a stroke is down here. You can see it has no fill, but it has a three point black stroke applied. And that's, that's another handy shortcut. So I'm gonna take that and go to path and select stroke to path. And there we go, that's now finalized and ready to go. And then finally, we have objects that have masks applied. So if I take this star right here and I zoom in on this, this has another object applied on top of it as a mask. So I'm going to release the mask by going to Object, Mask, and choosing Release Mask. And I'm gonna take this object, make sure I have it raised to the top, and I'll make this a different color just so I can see where it lays against the graphic. And since I wanted this effect to be subtracted from the star, instead of applying it as a mask, I'm just gonna use a path difference. So I'll select both of these and I'll make sure that they're paths. I'll go to path, object to path, and then path difference. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna take this object and move it back in place. And what I will do now is I'm gonna save this file and now I'll open up this file in Cricut Design Space and see how it looks. Okay, so I've saved everything and moved it over into Cricut Design Space. This here is the original design with all of the details lost, but if I move over here, you can see here is the new and improved design after I've made all of those edits. You can see all of the effects and details are preserved in place. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this is not really my lane, so I don't know much about this stuff. So if there's a type of object that creates problems in Cricut Design Space that I didn't catch in this video, feel free to leave a comment below letting us all know. So as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you wanna check that out. As always, thanks for watching.